Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D. Today I'm going to review the Xtool D1 Pro. It's the upgraded model from the D1 that I reviewed last year. This update fixed some of the issues that I had with the last machine, and then some. So what do I think of it? Is there anything I feel could still be improved? Well, let's find out. So to start off, I wanted to give a shout out to Xtool for something that I normally just mention in passing. And this is not an unboxing video, but I have to say how impressed I was with the presentation of how this machine is boxed. Uh, I have opened quite a few lasers now, but nothing has come close to the amount of thought and care that went into this machine. You are first greeted with two green boxes that hold three full color booklets on a quick start guide, nice and easy to follow assembly instruction manual with pictures, and a brochure of projects made with the D1 machine. It also comes with an aluminum sheet that you can place under whatever you're working on to keep from destroying your table, as well as the largest material pack I have ever gotten with a laser. It comes with wood, glass, cork, anodized metal cards, rubber stamps, and a sheet for marking on glass. I have also received other material samples before, but nothing quite to this extent. It also comes with a pair of what I feel are very nice safety goggles, and even comes with a case and a cleaning cloth. There is also a neat little part storage box to keep different things in as well, which I have already put to good use. None of this really has to do anything with the operation of this machine, but it does go to make the point known that the company is really thinking about providing the best product experience to their customers. So now for the machine itself. At first glance, the machine looks pretty similar to the original version. That is until you see the massive 20 watt output laser on the Pro version. More about that later. The frame is still the same, but it's hiding some of its updated features. The biggest change other than the laser, in my opinion, is that the machine now comes equipped with limit switches. This was sort of my largest gripe with the last version, since I like to work with absolute coordinates, and finally that is possible with this machine. The limit switches are also not a button or a switch, but a sensor that is triggered when an electrical field is broken. This means there is nothing to wear out on this component, so it should last for a long time. The frame of the D1 Pro, just like the original version, is all metal. It still has the steel wheels that run on both the X and Y axes. It pretty much seems to be an identical frame to the original and has the same footprint. There are, however, three different options for this machine, and this also slightly affects the work area of this machine. The D1 Pro comes in a 5, 10, and 20 watt version. The 20 watt version that I have is quite a bit larger than the old 10 watt, and that also affects the work area. Again, the watts have to do with the optical power of the machine, essentially how strong the laser beam is. The machine can be controlled by either the free proprietary software Xtool Creative Space or the paid program Lightburn. If you use Xtool software, you can also use a Wi-Fi feature on the machine where you can transfer jobs to the onboard SD card so the machine can be used without a wired connection. While Creative Space is not as powerful and feature heavy as Lightburn, it is still the nicest proprietary software that I have used on any of my other laser brands. I will probably create another video in the future to dive more in depth on that software. This machine is still not open source like many of my other lasers, so you are still limited in how much control you have over different settings on this machine. While you can change some settings in the Gerbil controls in Lightburn, you don't have access to everything. You are also limited to just the two software options, and you can't use anything like Laser Gerbil or any other software. The work area of the 5 and 10 watt lasers is 430 by 400 millimeters. This is slightly smaller than what was listed on the old D1 area, but I'm guessing that it's more realistic now that the machine has limit switches and doesn't just bang into the frame. The work area of the 20 watt is slightly smaller at 430 by 390 millimeters. This has to be because of the much larger laser module and needing that extra space to move it around. The 20 watt laser is essentially four 5 watt lasers that combine into one beam to generate that power. The 20 watt also comes with an air assist nozzle, 
which you really want with a laser this powerful. This machine does not come with an air source, but Xtool also sells a very quiet and powerful air pump if you'd like to use that. The air assist is essential for cutting with the machine with this amount of power, but I also recommend finding a way to have the airflow on at least a little bit during engraving to keep the lens clean. The machine doesn't come with any type of airflow regulator, but I recommend adding one in line to make sure you always have at least some airflow when the nozzle is installed on the laser. On one side of the laser module, they upgraded the screw with a nice lever for tightening the laser height in place. On the other side, we still have the fixed focus lever that you just pull down to find the proper height for the fixed focus laser, uh, but now there is a new feature where you can adjust the height of the focus lever to account for the different depths you are trying to cut at. For engraving, you just always set this to zero, but if you're trying to cut deeper, you could move the level adjuster up, which will in turn move the nozzle down, closer to the surface. This actually brings me to my first slight gripe about this machine and design. While adjusting the fixed focus level, you are also adjusting the height of the laser shield. The laser shield has been updated to supposedly allow for better airflow and smoke management out away from the laser head. The issue I ran into is that the shield comes so close to the surface that you are trying to work on, it actually becomes unforgiving of anything that might get in the way. I source a lot of my working materials from home improvement stores, and they are not always the flattest surfaces in the world to work with. It wouldn't take much for the shield to start dragging on even slightly warped surfaces. Also, while cutting, if you ever had a piece you were cutting fall out incorrectly and accidentally stick up a little bit, the shield would probably catch that and potentially ruin your piece. I found that for much of the work I did in cutting, I actually had to remove the shield to limit the potential for colliding with the wood. Just be sure that if you remove the shield, you are using your safety glasses at all times or have a protective enclosure. The D1 Pro also comes upgraded with a few other safety features, including a flame detector and a tilt or move sensor that will stop the laser if a fire or bump of the machine is detected. I found that the flame sensor was a bit sensitive, so I had to reduce that a bit in the Xtool Creative Space software. I found that I was setting off the alarm even without a fire. This is also not something that should ever be relied on to use your machine, especially with a 20 watt, but really with all lasers, you never want to use them unattended. Now onto the speed of this machine. The machine can engrave at a blazing fast 400 millimeters per second or 24,000 millimeters per minute. With the 20 watt laser, I have seen it mark wood at that speed so especially with lighter materials like cardstock or cardboard, I can see it marking that material just fine. There are a few downsides to all of that speed though that I came across in my testing. The first could be that the rapid movement at those types of speeds could be construed by the laser as a bump of the machine, especially with the heavier 20 watt module that could easily shake around with enough force at those speeds to trigger the alarm, which I did. The other somewhat unexpected thing that I ran into was I found out that my laptop that I had been using on all of my laser engravers was not powerful enough to always keep up with the speed of this laser engraver. When running something like a simple power test at those speeds, it's fine, but as soon as I was trying to engrave an image on the wood at those high speeds, I thought the laser was actually broken. It was really that my old laptop was not keeping up and it was skipping or jumping through commands being sent to the laser. At first I thought it might be a belt or some other kind of mechanical issue, but then I remembered seeing something in the documentation about how you shouldn't engrave in grayscale at those speeds and light burn on the D1, so I did a little test where instead of streaming the file over the USB connection, I would send the file to the laser over Wi-Fi using the Xtool Creative Space software, and the issue went away. Now, again, my laptop is a bit older, and so a desktop or a newer laptop might work fine, but I just wanted to point it out. 
This machine is also compatible with the rotary attachment that will allow you to burn tumblers and glasses and many other round objects. I won't go into that in this review, but you can check out a separate review on the RA2 Pro in the link above. So this is all great, but how did it perform? And I would have to say very nicely. This is the first time I have owned a laser where I could see at least some marking on the fastest speed setting advertised by the manufacturer. I burned this power speed test from Kobe Schmidt over on the Xtool Facebook group to verify that. I was able to burn this image of Mount Rushmore into the wood and it came out very nice and was faster than I have ever burned this image before. This again was after figuring out that I needed to transfer the image over Wi-Fi due to the speed of my laptop. Then I wanted to see how this machine could handle cutting. I was able to cut into this half inch plywood with ease in about four passes. Results will vary based on the wood that you have and many other factors. The company advertises 10 millimeters in one pass, but that would be with a lighter basswood or something like balsa wood. The next thing I wanted to try out was metal. Now the original D1 could mark stainless steel and other metals, but you had to first prepare the surface with some sort of coating, but with the power of the 20 watt laser, you could supposedly engrave directly on the surface without any coating. Another advertised feature of this is that at different speeds and power settings, you could achieve colors on the metal. Since I didn't have a lot of stainless steel lying around, I thought I would just test to see how well it would mark in the metal without worrying about the color. Aside from the fact that I did a terrible job of lining up the laser to the surface of this part, it did an amazing job etching into the surface without any prep of the surface at all. I also wanted to point out that this is not just a superficial marking on the surface, but is etched in. On the right, I had done with another five watt machine where I had to prep the surface with a marker and on the left is the 20 watt version. The 5 watt version still feels smooth to the touch, but the 20 watt version is actually engraved into. I can feel the etching on the surface, it will never wear off. Next I wanted to try the Norton White tile method on this machine. I first burned Colby's speed power test onto the tile, and I saw that I still would probably use the same settings I had on my previous D1, but with a much nicer result. I then burned the normal image that I make tile coasters with, and it worked great. To date, I think that this is the nicest version I have made of this image at 3000 millimeters per minute at 30% power. Lastly, I thought since this machine cuts faster and is more powerful than anything I have used before, I wanted to make something a little larger. I had some leftover 5mm thick plywood laying around, so I cut it up to make this box I found online. I was able to cut through it in one pass at 200mm per minute and 100% power, but I found that it was faster and better to cut it at 700mm per minute in four passes. It was a great little project and worked great with the air assist and very little charring. So overall, I really do like this machine. I was a little nervous with the power of the 20 watt since it's twice as powerful as anything else I have. Also, I have to point out that this is not a toy and you have to take using this machine very seriously. Never use this machine or any laser unattended. It only takes a second for material to catch on fire and ruin your day or worse. Be careful, use proper safety equipment and always be vigilant when using this machine. Now, which version of the machine would I recommend? Well, that really depends on your needs. If you wanna be able to cut deeper in one pass, then obviously the 20 watt version is what you wanna go with. Also, if you're looking to be able to burn colors or etch into the surface of metal, then go with the 20 watt. You do lose a little work area space, but it's only 10 millimeters, so it's pretty negligible. If you want much of the same features without the metal colors and deep cutting, then go with the 10 watt version. At the time of this video, the 10 watt version is $500 less than the 20 watt and still will get you much of the same experience other than what I was just mentioning. The 10 watt version also has a slightly smaller laser spot, but it might not be something that the average user even notices. In my opinion, since the 5 watt version is only $100 less than the 10 watt, 
I would go with the 10 watt. At twice the power of the 5 watt, I don't see any reason not to get the increased power unless you're really on a crunch budget. The laser spot of the 5 watt is also slightly smaller than the 10 watt, but again, it's not something that the average user would notice. So that's it. I wanted to thank Xtool with providing me this machine for my honest review and for listening to feedback from me and other users while improving the features on this new machine. Again, I will probably release another video in the future that goes over the Creative Space software, as well as an update to the laser grid that I have made in the past that uses my 3D printed feet to make use of those absolute coordinates. Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content coming out soon on laser engravers, 3D printers, injection molding, CNC, and all things maker. Be safe, and we'll see you next time.